So I'm here to tell you a little bit about gastrophysics, the uh, new science of eating. I think we've had decades, last three decades of uh, uh, science in the kitchen with molecular cooking, modernist cuisine, spumes, gels, foams, rotovaps, anti-griddles and beyond. That's taken us a long way. You might love it or hate it, uh, but it's taken somewhere. But what we haven't had until very recently is the science of the person who's doing the eating, the mind uh, and not just the mouth of the diner or the drinker. Uh, and that is what gastrophysics is all about, the new science uh, of eating, combining as it does kind of gastronomy on the one side, nice food experiences, uh, and psychophysics on the other, which is kind of the measurement science coming out of psychology, trying to understand what really drives our perception, our choice, and our behaviours around what we choose to eat, what we remember, and what we enjoy. And given this forum, I want to focus just on what kind of technology can and is starting to do to enhance, uh, to change our experience of food and drink uh, through the senses. Um, and I could have talking about uh, 3D food printing or robot chefs, uh, or even devices like uh, this you see here, where we have somebody enjoying a cookie, maybe one without much flavor. They've got the headset on, they've got the technology, um, and through the meta cookie, it can deliver the fragrance of whatever is your favorite uh, tasting cookie. It can solve some sort of problem. It shows a use for technology and combining it with food. It's just not something I think we're going to see anywhere uh, or any restaurant anytime soon. It's kind of uh, uh, too heavy. It sort of spoils the social aspect of dining. So I'm looking at other kinds of ways in which the technology doesn't get between you and the food uh, and really does uh, enhance the experience in a way that chefs, the, mix the mixologists, the baristas, uh, and the artists are, are interested in engaging with. For me, that really started. Uh, with this, kind of my Ig Nobel research, uh, the Ig Nobel for Nutrition in 2008, uh, working on the sonic chip, showing that when people bite into food, the sound, the sound of the crunch, the crackle, the creamy, the carbonated, uh, this is the forgotten flavour sense, um, and it's something you can augment um, or enhance, and the louder the sound of the crunch, the more people enjoy their crisps, um, the tastier, the fresher they seem uh, to be. So how might that research uh, play out in the fine dining and the gastrophysics scenario? Here's the first way it did, uh, uh, round one of technology at table. Um, at the Fat Duck in Bray, we have a Sunday Times reporter, undercover in the restaurant, uh, Heston Blumenthal, uh, the chef. Uh, this diner got a bit upset when he saw a new dish being delivered to somebody else in the restaurant that he hadn't had and said, do you know who I am? I demand to try that dish. And out, outed was the, uh, the kind of sonic headphones where you can see that carrot and the sauce in which it has been dipped can be enhanced through um, uh, uh, the microphone that picks up the sound of the crunch, makes it louder, and makes the flavor more intense and memorable. Technology at table, the new kind of cutlery, perhaps, for the 21st century. Thing is, it didn't work, didn't last long uh, in the restaurant, in part because those who go to such fine dining establishment often you get themselves dressed up nicely and then, and then somebody comes out from the kitchen and tells you in their best French accent to put the headphones on and kind of your hairstyle's all messed up a bit. You feel self-conscious and while the, the technology works, it doesn't really serve its purpose. Uh, it becomes between you and your dining, dining partners, if not the food. But take it away, bring it back a year later uh, and you see uh, the sound of the sea, seafood dish, the signature dish at the world's top restaurant, as has been for the last decade, uh, and one of the most successful, I think, examples of technology at table. Now we have little earbuds, so they don't make you feel self-conscious. Uh, put them in uh, an MP3 player in a nice conch shell. It's beautifully designed. It will come to the table looking like the sea with sashimi, foam, uh, uh, sand, a bit of seaweed. Um, and the chef or the waiter will recommend that you put the earbuds in before you taste the food and we should be hearing the sounds of the sea in the background. No? You have to imagine the sounds uh, of the sea in the background. And it's amazing. It brings people to tears. It really makes you sort of mindful of the food that you're eating, where it came from. And we've done the research with Heston and his team in Oxford to demonstrate that our oysters taste better uh, with that than anything else. And what started there in Bray in 2007, thereabouts, has now kind of gone worldwide as many of the world's top 50 San Pellegrino listed chefs are bringing technology to table. Uh, here we are, uh, not so far from here, in High Barnet, uh, Chef Joseph Youssef, a young up-and-coming chef who has the sounds of the sea to go with his jellyfish dish, 
trying to nudge his diners towards more sustainable sources of food. Uh, and he combines uh, the sounds of the sea with a, a projection mapping to have uh, the sea uh, uh, there on the table in front of you. A very different dining experience, one that involves technology and this kind of off the plate dining really. It's about the total experience and not just the taste experience. Because the research from our lab and others shows it's a total experience that matters uh, and that stays in mind, that creates sticky memories that you will talk about, share and perhaps come back uh, for more. But maybe you haven't been to uh, uh, Bray, maybe you can't afford to go to Bray, or, or nor to uh, High Barnet. You might not even know where it is. Um, but maybe you, you, you want to try that experience, you want to take it home. And for us, we like to work with the chefs because they're the most innovative. They can take the science and do wonderful things with it, things you really want to eat uh, that you will remember. They can make the science beautiful. They're also highly innovative. Uh, and innovation there in the kitchens happens much, much faster, we find, than with any of the large food and beverage uh, companies. A chef, if he believes the science, may put it on his or her menu next week, and you have real diners paying real money for the latest engagement uh, of their senses through technology. But ultimately, we have to make this kind of ubiquitous, and for that, uh, our passion is taking uh, the technology that we all have, the amazing mobile devices in many of our pockets, or the tablet, and say, how can that piece of technology be repositioned to enhance the taste experience? And here's just one possibility. Take that sound of the sea and serve off a tablet. Why not? Now, some of them are waterproof these days. Stick it in the dishwasher after you used it. Uh, tell stories about the food, and I'm sure I can demonstrate the research that that seafood will taste better to you if you have both the sights and the sounds of the sea. We could all be doing that uh, in our own dining rooms. Uh, others who are playing with the space are uh, people like this, Andreas Caminada in Switzerland, who's also in his Michelin-starred restaurant plating one dish off a tablet. And here, I guess, it's kind of an ironic take, really. I mean, why bother serving a, a dish from a tablet that's made to look like a white plate? Who needed the technology there? But in this sort of playful experimental space, something will come out. Um, and for us, the question is, how, what is the real functional benefit you can deliver through plating off the tablet through the technology? And for us, one suggestion, apart from telling stories about the food, uh, comes from work that we've been doing with Ferran Adria and his Alicia Foundation in Spain, another of the world's top uh, uh, restaurant research kitchens, where we found five years ago now that um, if we serve people what looks like a strawberry mousse, if we serve it to you off a white plate, you'll say it tastes sweeter, about 7% sweeter, uh, you'll like it 9% more, you'll think it's 13% more flavorful than exactly the same dessert served off the black plate. So while you cannot literally taste the plate, the color, the shape, the texture of the plateware all do change your experience. And if I can deliver some sweetness without the calories, who might not want that in the long term? Now, of course, you might think, is there a perfect plate? I should get it at home so all my food tastes sweeter or better. And the answer is no. It kind of depends on what the color of the food is. Because you're looking for contrast between the food and the plateware. Optimize that to optimize the experience. And that's where the technology may come in. Because maybe the solutions here are either to um, stuck up your cupboards with a rainbow assortment of every color of crockery for the foods you might bring in. Or if you serve from a tablet, then you can optimize the screen color for the specific food you have uh, and free up your cupboards for something else. Delivering a functional benefit to the tasting experience through technology uh, and solving a very real problem. What else might we do? Uh, we're interested in, that, in the mobile devices and this whole idea of sonic seasoning. Going from the fat duck when the world's top chef brings from the kitchen technology to your table for a once in a lifetime experience. How do we make that ubiquitous? Take the technology in your pocket and show you how you can use it to season your food, just like the salt and pepper shaker. And here's how it works. Here at the House of Wolf restaurant, uh, now closed down in Islington from about 2012 with uh, chef and culinary artist Caroline Hopkinson, with sound designers Condiment Junkie, uh, and ourselves. Multi-course tasting menu, we've got one thing about sight, one course on sound, one on smell. It's a sound course at the bottom, the dessert, that's the interesting one here. Uh, the Sonic Cake Pop. If you can read the text, take out your mobile device, dial 0845 680 24 something if you want to make your dessert sweeter. Take out your mobile device, dial a different number if you want to make your dessert uh, a little bit more bitter instead. What's going on here? Well, here you can see a diner in the restaurant with their mobile technology repositioned as sonic seasoning. They're listening to one of those two soundtracks. You might think, is that bitter or is it sweet? Um, they've got a bit of sweet chocolate lolly, so there's really bitterness and sweetness on the palate, but we're accentuating through sound um, based on the scientific research in the lab, but also online, a sound that we think is probably more bitter than this sound. 
can't be literally, the sound can't literally be sweet, but it is sweeter, the one, sweeter than the one you just heard. And we now have the research uh, to, to add sonic seasoning, about five to 10% increase in sweetness simply by playing the tinkling high-pitched sounds. You have musical menus now that we can pass on to composers, sound designers, in order to bring out sweetness, spiciness, uh, a creaminess of the chocolate of one of Dominic Persune's Michelin-starred uh, chocolates from Belgium. Uh, we have music to go with pretty much every taste delivered through your own uh, technology. How might we use that in the future? Well, here's one suggestion coming out of a, uh, a Vietnamese cafe, a Jin Cafe, where they play sweet music 24-7. Why so? Because they can add a little bit less sugar to the cakes, the pastries and their drinks, but keep your tasting experience the same simply by having sweet music all day long. Sounds like a nice idea. Does sonic seasoning work forever or just for a day? That is a question no one has an answer to yet. Uh, and you'd kind of want to know that it was true that sonic seasoning worked in the long term before you invested in something perhaps uh, like this. What else do we have? We're sort of excited by the notion of, of, of um, sort of delivery of, of food to home. We've done the research to show that uh, you know, Justin Bieber is a really bad thing for takeaway meals. Taylor Swift is great uh, for many kinds of takeaway food. If we know the perfect match between what you're eating, what you've ordered um, uh, for the home environment, and your kind of musical taste preferences, maybe we can deliver you a total multi-sensory experience night after night where the food matches and enhances uh, what you are tasting. This is the whole new world of, of sensploration sensoriums, a lot of it about, from the Tate uh, uh, Museum in London through branded experiences using the technology to uh, enhance the multi-sensory on and off dining experience at home. We can enhance it. We can also kind of make it worse, I suppose. What you're listening to now is the sourest music known to mankind. Uh, we've got a yogurt, uh, we've got a sour shape, we've got a sour color, all tested by research. Put all those things together, you've got a really multi-sensory sour experience, and be it yogurt, be it a white wine, and you really can't, it's not the same taste with that music in the background. It really brings out the acidity. Um, and here we're combining sonic seasoning with shape symbolism to create multi-sensory um, experience. Uh, one other example uh, uh, comes from the work with The Roots and Bompas and Pa and Stella Artois from last year. Uh, the Roots play Saturday Night Live and they created a new song based on our research to be listened to while you're drinking your can of, can of Stella. Uh, they took the findings from the research and created two versions of the same song with different instrumentation, one sounding more sweet, one sounding more bitter. You can um, play with it at home. Uh, and also you'll see in the short clip from the video they change the, the shapes and the colors in the background of the video, again, to bring out bitterness or sweetness in a multi-sensory, sensploratory uh, taste uh, experience. And again, this is the sort of thing uh, 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 that people uh, can have in their home and environment. I think sitting in front of the TV, it's brought the technology from the high end to the mainstream. Finally, thinking about uh, sustainability um, rather than just entertainment, here we have some of the work for, together with Katsuo Okajima, a very intelligent man and a team of Japanese scientists, vision scientists, taking the um, headset you might be using to watch your movies in front of the TV and repositioning it uh, to create augmented reality sushi. Uh, and there you can see the sushi on the left and on the right. Um, and each time, I don't know if we have the video again, uh, each time the person puts their hand over the sushi on the right, you'll see it changes the fish. So imagine a time a few years from today when we fish the seas to extinction of our favorite sushi fish, maybe we'll have the virtual experience instead. Look at the texture, look at the veining, a very hard technical challenge, but uh, Katsuo has managed it. Um, and you can bite into that sushi. There are no QR codes, no meta cookies on top. Uh, and have maybe a very different taste uh, experience. Also, a playful interaction with your fellow diners as you wave your hand over their plate and make them eat something really disgusting, or so it appears to the eye. And if you see his latest work, I'd say this augmented approach now, he can add virtual creamer to a black cup of coffee. He can add virtual steam to make your drink seem hot, a really exciting place, place to um, change things. So with that, uh, I'll leave you hopefully with a sense of how technology is coming to change the dining experience, how it starts, the most innovative stuff at the high-end restaurants, but through the technology that we all possess um, is being transformed into kind of a, a ubiquitous multi-sensory dining experience, both on the plate uh, or, or off. Um, thank you.